Hello, today I want to talk about the topic of virtual idols. There was a question about these virtual characters that were becoming popular and we were wondering whether or not they're going to go anywhere. Are they just a fad? Are they something important? So first let me explain what these virtual characters are, these virtual idols. These are avatars. These are digital characters of people who have a personality, but they don't exist. So they may be looking cartoon-like or they may be photorealistic, but they're basically CGI, computer-generated characters. But they're created as kind of celebrities, as lifestyle influencers. And, or maybe they work in a band. They're kind of a singer in a band. And that's where they kind of started in Japan. Um, but now there's Instagram accounts and YouTube accounts following um, these virtual fictional characters in their fictional lives. And more and more, these characters take on some of the same activities that human and real influencers do in having lives and birthday parties and they go out on outings and they eat food and stuff. But of course, it's all fictional. And... Um, they have real followers, real many millions of real people following them, just as you might follow them on a, a real celebrity on a TV show, or you might follow a fictional character in a story. So that's today. And I think my short answer about what the future is, that it's going to be very, very big. Now, I don't think this is a passing fad. I think this is actually going to become a really central entertainment in the future, when we'll be able to have characters that are increasingly indistinguishable from a real person, and they will have very complicated and influential lives um, that are being scripted with people who make stories like Hollywood screenwriters, people whose job it is is to make interesting characters. And they will assume a lot of the, the input that really good storytellers now aim towards movies, of making people with interesting stories that you care about. But instead of being in a movie, they're going to be on YouTube. They're going to be on the news. They're going to be in your account. And instead of completely being scripted in terms of everything they say, they're going to be created as his character with a lot of leeway to say things impromptu, to say things spontaneously, to react and have a conversation. So they could actually really be interviewed by someone like you or me, and they would respond like a real person, but they aren't going to be real. They're going to be a fictional AI construct. And there'll be many varieties of these. Some will be cartoony, literally cartoony, and others will be incredibly photorealistic. They look like humans. And then others are going to be, you know, they'll fill the, the space of characters that we have in movies. They could be aliens. They could be machines. They could be animals. Um, and, or some weird hybrid of humans. And so, unlike actual living celebrities today, um, there'd be a much more diverse group of these characters that we're going to interact with. So there are several things about this. One is, um, unlike real celebrities, these will be engineered and, and they will be optimized for maximum influence and following which means that they'll be data-driven. And so um, humans often, particularly those who become famous, rebel against having to perform certain things and they don't, they may get tired of trying to serve the fans or um, be molded by the fans, but these characters are gonna be absolutely molded by fans. And so there'll be enough data generated by 
looking at the responses of people's engagement to what they say things, that that data would go back. And if they're saying things that people like, they'll say more of that. And um, in that way, they'll be kind of optimized celebrities. And they'll do that in a way that most humans are probably not going to want to be manipulated, but they're going, we're going to manipulate these virtual idols, these virtual celebrities. And so um, uh, this will become a, a data-driven enterprise where the reactions of, um, of other, it's not just that those celebrities, but they're going to be looking at all celebrities and they'll be able to kind of figure out what gets the most reaction, the most watches when a celebrity says things. In the way that AI has actually been extracting what makes a hit song. So you take all the hit songs of the world and you process it through an AI and you say, what do these have in common? And let's produce a new song. Let's produce a new song written by the computer that's based on how all the other bestseller hit songs have done. And that doesn't always work 100%, but it gives a little bit of an edge to the song. And so the song is being, a new song is being created based on the data of all the existing previous songs. That kind of a logic will be used with these digital celebrities where celebrities does X and Y and it produces this kind of a following or love or adoration or interest. And so therefore, we're going to, we'll figure out how to do more of that. So this will be an optimization of celebrity in a certain sense. It's like the things that celebrities do kind of accidentally or intuitively, there'll be a science behind it. There'll be numbers to suggest that this digital celebrity is going to kind of continue doing these things based on the engagement of the fans. And so um, this is... Um, uh, going to be very, very big. And um, it's not that people will not know that they're not real. So maybe sometimes there'll be some attempt to try and fake or, you know, pass off one of these characters as a real person. That will happen, I'm sure, every now and then. But um, just as we kind of admire fictional characters in a movie. You know, I mean, even though they're being acted by, uh, masked by actors, we might admire, it, you know, a Tony Stark. Okay, so Tony Stark is a character. He's not, that's, he's not the same as the actor who's playing him. He's a, he's a certain character and personality. And so imagine if that character, the Tony Stark, not the actor, Tony Stark had a life off screen or just that the life that continued beyond just the movies. And he had a life and he would go play tennis and he would interact with so-and-so. Well, those all can be generated in a kind of computer graphic way. So you could see this person, you could have YouTube clips of this person interacting with it, even though he doesn't really exist. You can fake this in a real environment with computer graphics. So, so the, the technology that's going to be used is the same thing they're using to make movies, but they're doing it in now, do it in real time. And um, just as a movie can have an individual computer generated character in a real street, and you can't tell the difference, this will be the same thing, but it's going to be in real time. So, this character is walking down the street looking like he or she is going into Starbucks, having a coffee, sitting down, even though that didn't really happen. It really looks like that. And then the fans maybe says, I'll take some questions from the fans. And you could actually ask that virtual celebrity a question and they're going to answer to you. And it looks like they're talking. Their face moves, their same voice. It's a virtual performance. And so that kind of virtual presence becomes very, very powerful. And it's as if that Tony, Tony Stark character really had a life. And so it's not just the actor who's now 
being followed. It's the character themselves. And they will have even more followers than the actor will. And they will have a life and maybe they have a messy divorce and maybe they have all these other things, a reality TV show based around them, but none of them really exist. It's all just something that's being computer generated to make it look like it. And so the technology for making these characters look real, having a voice, they can have their own voice that can respond in natural language, um, and then having a story around them are going to make them very, very powerful because they will be optimized to really engage us. And, and it's not completely impossible to imagine one of them running for president, right? Because they will be loved. They can, they, they, you know, they can be engineered in a way that no human can actually be perfected to appear to be this ideal person. And um, of course, behind it will be a lot of the people to make this work and they are guiding it in some ways. Um, and so um, I think that this will be a huge entertainment cultural influence in a way that seems kind of remote now, but um, um, in the beginning, this will be a very expensive proposition to generate this in real time, photorealistically. Right now, they're kind of cartoon versions. They look like anime. They look like you know, manga. They're, they're simple. But they already have um, a lot of followers. There's Instagram versions where they're photorealistic. They have millions of followers. So um, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of expensive, but over time, this will become um, cheaper and cheaper and there'll be more and more of these um, kinds of characters. The, the last thing to say is that there's also, as I mentioned, you could, if you can have a, you can make an ideal movie star character, you could also make an alien just as easily. But there's also a way in which you're going to make hybrids where, where, where you can take a real person like myself and I could actually put a filter, a computational filter over me through the lens where, to, where I would look more handsome or I could change my voice to be lower or I could improve my looks in some ways that um, uh, you would think that I was a movie star. And so I could have my same body motions, I could have, I could be speaking, but I could have a filter over me that would be, make me partly virtual. And that's actually happening right now and it's happening in China where um, people who are live streaming have a filter that makes them look more beautiful. And um, so, so, so that is one way in which uh, a real person can be disguised or a virtual character char character can be disguised as a real person. So this, this blending of the two, I think is going to happen a lot more where, where ordinary people are going to take some of those attributes of the digitized virtual idol and, and celebrity and try and become better looking, smarter. Of course, they're making up their lives anyway, pretending to be happier than they are. But even but that can be done even more so. So we're going to see more of that, where um, ordinary people are going to be made more like celebrities through this kind of a celebrity filter, and that will be that will probably be a lot more harder to incorporate into the culture than just the outright fictional person is this kind of personalization. And there's one last thing that I would say about that, that we could also imagine in the far future, which is that we know from some kind of studies in the universities right now of research labs that if I see a face that looks more like my face, a face of somebody else's, if somebody else's face looks more like my face, I am much more inclined to agree with them or be like them. That's just a biological response that we tend to respond to people that are more like us. And one of the th ways is we respond to people who look more like us. Well, one of the things we can do with virtual reality is we can actually, and, and also this computational photography is we can actually, in theory, 
um, modify someone's face to look like the viewer, even if there's a, a million viewers. So each of the million viewers would see that person in a different way. They would see a slightly different face of that virtual character. They would see the face modified to look a little bit more like them. So I looked at the this virtual Tony Stark, he would have a little bit of my genes, so to speak, in his face. And if you looked at him, he would have a little bit of your genes in the face that you saw. And we would each see in this character a slightly different face that would be more reflective of our own face. And that increases our sympathy and empathy with them. And again, if I was to imagine some kind of a virtual politician candidate, that's what they would be doing, is they would be using that technology so that they seem to be more like you individually for everybody who looked at them, they would see a little bit of them in them. So that's one of the things that we can do or that can be done with this technology is it can be this digital celebrities, virtual celebrities can be tailored to reflect you and to increase your empathy for them. So that's one of the many things that I think will be done with this virtual celebrities. And I think that's one of the reasons why I believe this is gonna be a really big thing in the future. Thank you.